Good day students, today we're looking at a solution to a problem um, that's in the series of hypothesis testing. So let's get right to it, see what we're dealing with. The amount of a certain trace element in blood. Now trace elements in blood are things that are found in blood in very small amounts such as lead or silver or magnesium, you know, some sort of chemical that's found in blood naturally, but in very, very small amounts. All right, is known to vary with a standard deviation of 14.1 parts per million. PPM means parts per million for male blood donors and 9.5 parts per million for female donors. Random samples of 75 male and 50 female donors yield concentration means of 28 and 33 parts per million respectively. Using 0 0.05 significance level, what is the likelihood that the population means of concentrations of the element are the same for men and women? Okay, notice we're dealing with two samples here now. So what I like to do first is just make a list of those samples uh, and see what we're dealing with. Well, we know we have our first sample, we'll say is men, and our second sample is women right so it looks like we have now what information do we know about each sample and each population so uh, the population for it looks like 14.1 parts per million it's a standard deviation of that for male so that sigma and we'll call it sigma 1 sample 1 is 14.1 parts per million so the standard deviation of the female is 9.5 uh, parts per million. So we do know the standard deviations of both the male and female populations, okay? So that means if we know the standard deviations, we're going to use, of course, the z-test, aren't we? So this is an example of two, two sample z-tests. All right, what else do we know? Let's take a look. Uh, looks like we know we have two sample sizes. So N1, just change colors here. So N1 is equal to uh, male. How many males? 75 male. There's 75. So N2, the sample size for female is 50. And that's another thing. Now we're dealing with independent uh, independent populations, right? Our samples. We know the uh, standard deviation of both, therefore it's going to be a z-test. Now, in most cases we don't know the standard deviations of the populations, therefore we move on to another test called the t-test. But in this particular case we do know them, so we're going to use a z-test. Let's see what else we know. Um, means of 28 and 33 respectively. Now respectively that word there means at the first number here goes with the first one here. The second number, so it's telling you an order, that's all. Okay? So that means the mean of the, so x bar 1, the mean of the men, is 28 parts per million, and the mean of the sample for women, which we call x bar 2, was 33 parts per million. So there's the information, I like to list it like that. Now, using a 0 0.05 significance level. What is the likelihood that the population means are the same for men and women? Oh, okay, so now we're comparing the means of the population. So we're saying in our null hypothesis is the mean of the men's population equal to the women's or are they different? Which is not, right? So there is your null and alternate hypothesis. So, and remember now in previous videos, and I'm sure your teachers told you this already, the null hypothesis always contains the equal sign. So if you're not sure where it goes, remember the equal sign is always with the null hypothesis. It's the status quo. You test against that. Now, alpha is the level of significance, and we're given that. No, so there's no need to decide it. It's 0 0.05 in this case, right? It's already given to us right there. So that's easy to do. Now what test? We've already talked about that. It's a z-test. 
And why is it a Z test? Well, both populations are quite large, but the fact is we know sigma. Sigma is known for both populations, so therefore we're going to use the Z test. Now, what is the decision rule? The decision rule takes another extra minute here to decide. People call this the critical value section, so whatever you want to call it, but we do have to find the critical value. Now, before we can define any critical value, we have to know what type of test you're doing. Now, is it a left-tailed, some call it a lower tail, is it a right tail, some people call it upper tail, or is it a two-tailed test? Well, hopefully you can see why it's a two-tailed. We're not concerned about whether it's just le less than or just greater than. We're concerned that it's not equal to. So this is where we use a two-tailed test. So it can be above a certain value or below a certain value. And two-tailed tells us, right, something very important, that the area, then we're going to split alpha over 2. It's going to be symmetric on both sides, right? So if we're doing, we know it's inverse norm for a z value, therefore, but where it's two-tailed, I have to use alpha over 2, and of course the mean of a z distribution is 0, and the standard deviation is 1. So that's what we're going to put in on the calculator. Inverse norm, okay, of alpha over 2. Now what's alpha? It's 0 0.05 divided by 2. That's 0 0.025, 0, and 1. So let's do that. Now, so we have, where do I find the inverse norm? It's under distribution, above the VARS button. See the VARS? Now it's in blue, so anytime you need the blue, you have to hit the second bu button first, then distribution. Go down to the third one, inverse norm. It's asking you for the area, 0 0.025. And for Z1, of course, the mean is 0, standard deviation of 1. For a standard Z-score, and we get negative 1.96. Now since it's two-tailed, you can write right away, you say, and positive 1.96, because we split that area. So how do we represent that in our chart? Well, negative 1.96 is roughly right here. Okay, negative 1.96, positive 1.96 right here. And what we're saying then, and we're going to run the test in step five, is this area right here. Okay, this area right here. I'm shading in now, very small area. Okay, this area here is alpha over 2, which is 0 0.025, and it's in our reject, what we call reject and null hypothesis. Here, of course, um, the same thing. It's also 0 0.025 because we took point 0.05 and split it, right? So alpha over 2 here for two-tailed. This is also in our reject region. Okay? Now, anything in between that, anything in between positive 1.96 and negative is our acceptance region, or better still, they say in the text, most texts to say this, do not reject HO. Now, lots of people use the word accept HO, so for our purposes and from here on in, you'll see we use both, so don't worry about that. Do not. Lots of people say accept HO as well. Technically, it's more correct to say do not reject HO because um, there could be type 1, type 2 errors, but I won't get into that in this video now. All right, so we have our critical values. In this case, we have two. So what's our, what's our decision rule based on what you've seen? Our decision rule is what? If we get a Z value in step five, that is less than negative 1.96, or if we get a Z value in step five that is greater than 1.96, we are going to reject the null hypothesis and therefore accept the alternate hypothesis. Okay. Now, before we run our conclusion, we've got a little bit of work to do in step five as well. So steps four and five require an extra bit of work. So let's do step five now. What do we got to do with step five? Well, in step five, we actually have to run the test value. Find that calculated value of z. Now, again, we've, we used the formula in one previous video, but 
in this in this video it's much more easier and we'll be doing them by the calculator anyway so we're going to use the calculator to compute these so let's go now what is it we're doing well stat all our tests are found under stat go across the tests now this is a two sample z test okay so this is a two sample z we're doing right so let me just jot that down here get rid of that for a second hold on so what we're doing here now is a two sample okay z test that's how you find it in the calculator two sample z so let's go down to two sample z oh third one I passed it hit enter and again our stats is highlighted we don't have the individual data so we use the stats function first thing it's asking you for is the standard deviation of the population right and in of the first one which is min so that's 14.1 so you just plug these in pretty doing uh, sigma 2 the standard deviation of the other population which is 9.5 parts per million for female the mean which is 28 of the first sample the men sample and the sample size for the men was 75 the mean for the female was 33 and the sample size for the female was 50 next thing we check and see if we're doing the right tail uh, notice that less than is highlighted we need to highlight so hit enter so make sure that not equal is highlighted and then hit calculate now the value came out to be what let's jot that down z is equal to uh, z is equal to negative 2.37 let's round off negative 2.37 Okay, now where does that fit in our region? Let's go down and have a look at that. Where does that fit in our region? Negative 2.37 is somewhere right here. Look, let me just change the color here. Right there, so it's different. So here's negative 2.37 right there. See it? Now it's in our reject region, isn't it? So therefore we are saying reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternate hypothesis except H uh, HA or H1 if you're using H1 alright so now the last thing I would do therefore is write my conclusion in words and when we say accept HA what does that mean we'll look back at HA we're saying the means for the men and women are not different are not the same right they're not the same so you should write that out in words so say the means now the means of what the means of the concentrations of these elements right but I'm not going to write all that out the means are not the same for men and women in this particular problem okay now the only last thing I want to tell you before I stop is look at the p-value lots of people will ask for that as well look on your calculator here see P.018 if I round off what does that mean once again that's just another way to that's a probability test Point zero one eight we got from our calculator and remember if P is less than alpha we also reject uh, point zero one eight is definitely less than point zero five so this verifies our previous conclusion to reject the null hypothesis okay therefore we are now finished so there's this is basically extra isn't it right here this is extra down here this p test is sometimes you're asked for it sometimes you're not so I'll just write extra next to that okay that's the video done um, there's an example of a two sample Z test uh, with the calculator using the calculator to do it that's it for now